Daquan Jones is back. Also, who should you root for this weekend? An injury update with banged up bills and my five predictions for Sunday against the Patriots are all coming your way today on Locked On Bills. You are locked on bills. Your daily Buffalo Bills podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. What's up, Bills Mafia? It's Joe Marino, author of Go Bills and Buffalo's Run, also the co-host of the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast, and I am your host of Locked On Bills. want to thank you for making Locked On Bills your first listen every day, and a big welcome and shout-out to our everydayers. You know who you are. Those of you who never miss a single episode, I appreciate you all being here very, very much. I'd also like to invite you to subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates that you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Well, folks, this will be our last conversation before the Bills face the Patriots on Sunday afternoon. The Bills First 1 p.m. Eastern time kickoff since they played the Patriots last in week seven. So if you are a fan of the 1 p.m. kicks, they're back for this week. At least we'll we'll see what happens next week. The Bills-Dolphins week 18 game has not been scheduled yet in terms of the time or the date, right? It could be Saturday or Sunday. We'll know at some point on Sunday when that game will be. So stay tuned there. But let's dive into it. We've got some final things to dig into. Of course, injuries with Dr. Kyle Trimble and predictions for Sunday all come your way today. But we got to start with some big news, and it's that Daquan Jones is back. The Bills starting one technique defensive tackle alongside Ed Oliver is back. And that's a big deal. He tore a pectoral muscle back in week five against the Jaguars in the London game, and it's been a process for him to get back, but the Bills opened his practice window last week, and Sean McDermott announced on WGR 550 on Friday morning that he is expected to play Sunday against the New England Patriots. Now, obviously, this is a huge addition. We've enjoyed Daquan Jones over the last year, and then, of course, into this season, and the start of this season, he was playing at an extremely, extremely high level. And I'm very curious to see where he's at. And I'm glad that he's going to get some opportunity this week to ramp up in game action. And that should help him be more of a factor, right, in the Miami game and then the playoffs beyond that. But what should our expectations be? Is he going to come in and be the same player we saw in the first four and a half games of the season, which was, I mean, candidly, at an all-pro level. I don't think he'll be there, but can he be close to it? Can he be close to that? Because if so, that's going to be a major, major boost to this Bills defense, especially with Jordan Phillips on injured reserve. And so you you saw last week the Bills started Tim Settle next to Ed Oliver. Daquan Jones elevates that spot. And that helps put Linval Joseph... It puts Tim Settle, it puts Puna Ford down the pecking order when it comes to playing time at defensive tackle. And so the domino effects here are fascinating. It really depends on how much Daquan Jones can play and how good he is. That, that'll, that of course, be the most important dynamic in play here. But if he's close to where he was, you have to figure he's going to eat into a lot of that playing time and potentially put Puna Ford back into the inactive list. So I'll be curious to see what the fallout of this is, but the bottom line is the Bills are getting Daquan Jones back, and if he's anything like he was earlier in the season, there's a big-time addition to this Buffalo Bills defense, and the Bills are getting healthy at the right time here. No player goes into Sunday with a with an injury designation. Kyer Elam was brought back this week off of his practice window. Uh, he's back on the active roster. Micah Hyde's expected to play on Sunday. 
Sounds like AJ Epinesa is improving and has a chance to play Sunday. And so you've really turned the corner here injury-wise. Of course, Matt Milano's not coming back. Trey White's not coming back. But I think you can make a case that Rasul Douglas might be an upgrade to Trey White. And as for Matt Milano, Sean McDermott, every time he's asked about it, continues to say that's probably a no-go this year. So I'm not really expecting him to come back. So the Bills have done well to get healthy at this point in the season. Of course, there's some guys out there, Damian Harris, Naheem Hines, those guys aren't coming back. And Sean McDermott was asked about Damian Harris this week, actually on Friday, and said, is there an update on Damian Harris? And Sean McDermott said, no update. And then that was the end of the press conference. So I'm not operating with any level of expectation that Damian Harris is going to return to this football team. I'm operating as if the Bills running backs are James Cook, Latavius Murray, Ty Johnson, and Leonard Fournette. I'm not thinking about Damian Harris. That was a pretty direct, no update, don't count on him being available. And I've gotten some questions about Damian Harris, so I'm glad that Sean McDermott was asked about it and um, gave the response that he did. Uh, The corresponding move here to get Daquan Jones back on the active roster is the Bills released offensive lineman Jermaine Effetti, who's been inactive all season long. And he's a veteran and I think a very serviceable backup tackle. But obviously the Bills felt like he was the player to move on from, which is a good sign to where the Bills think they are at with Ryan Vandemark, who is the Bills swing tackle, the first one off the bench at either left or right tackle. And so that's a good sign for Ryan Vandemark and his development, but also a level of comfort that they must have in the depth beyond that. And you look at Alec Anderson, you look at Ryan Bates, you look at David Edwards, and that's three players there who can play tackle for you. And so obviously the Bills assessed their roster and felt like moving forward, they'd be okay without Jermaine Effetti, which again is a good sign for Ryan Vandemark and then the other levers that they can pull, whether it's Ryan Bates, David Edwards, or Alec Anderson to play some tackle. So the Bills getting healthier, making roster moves, and um, feels like they're trending in a good direction here. Some rooting interest stuff to talk about for this weekend. And the Bills have 14 different playoff clinching scenarios. There's a good chance they could clinch on Sunday, a clinch a, a playoff spot. Now, of course, none of those scenarios exist with a Bills loss to the Patriots. So step one, beat the Patriots. You do that, you're going to have a really good chance at clinching a playoff spot. So I want to talk about some of those scenarios. I'm going to try to make it very simple for you. But before I talk about those scenarios, I want to talk about the most important scenario, which is the Bills' path to winning the AFC East. It's simple. Beat the Patriots. Dolphins lose in Baltimore. That game's being played at 1 o'clock. And if that happens, if the Dolphins lose to the Ravens and the Bills beat the Patriots, Week 18 in Miami is for the division. That's what I want. Now, there's other opportunities for the Bills to go to the postseason that don't include winning the AFC East. But again, if you do that, if you win against the Patriots and you beat the Dolphins next week, and of course the Dolphins lose to the Ravens, totally possible, you're the AFC East champs for a fourth consecutive season. Now, As I mentioned, there are playoff clinching scenarios for the Bills. And here's the most simple way that I can explain that to you. The most logical path for the Bills to clinch on Sunday is, of course, by beating the Patriots. And then you need the Steelers to lose to Seattle in Seattle. And you need the Bengals to lose to the Chiefs in Kansas City. If you get those three results, Bills beat the Patriots, Seahawks beat the Steelers, Chiefs beat the Bengals, the Bills are playing in the playoffs. Now, if one of those don't happen, Steelers beat the Seahawks or the Bengals beat the Chiefs, from there you would just need the Panthers to beat the Jaguars, and you go. So you need two of three there. And the least likely of them is, of course, the Panthers, the worst record in the NFL, beating Jacksonville in Jacksonville, although Jacksonville is playing very poorly right now, and the Panthers have been fairly competitive. So you need two of three. You need the Steelers, Bengals, Jaguars. You need two of three of them to lose. Ideally, it's just the 
Steelers and the Bengals that lose because what gets challenging with Jacksonville is if they enter the wild card conversation and you don't have the tiebreaker over them. So ideally, that's why I say go Seahawks, go Chiefs. Let's get the Bengals and Steelers losses, a Bills win, and punch your ticket to the postseason. The other scenario, let's say that that doesn't go down for you. You need to, of course, step one, beat the Patriots. Then you need the Texans and Colts to lose, and then either the Bengals or Steelers. So Texans and Colts have to lose. So the Titans are playing the Texans. The Texans are at home. So Titans at Texans, Raiders at Colts. You would need for both the Texans and the Colts to lose those games, and then either the Bengals, of course, losing that game to Kansas City, or you need the Broncos to lose to the Chargers. So that's your that's that's the plat the path there. That's the path there. So you need the Texans and Colts to lose, and then either the Bengals or Steelers, of course, Steelers playing Seattle. So you have a number of different ways to do it. I think the most straightforward path, beat the Patriots, Seahawks beat the Steelers, Chiefs beat the Bengals. We're playing postseason football. And hopefully within that, the Dolphins lose to the Ravens and you play week 18 in Miami for the AFC East. All right, talk to Dr. Kyle Trimble of Banged Up Bills here in just a moment, so be sure to stick with us. But folks, when you're hiring for your small business, you want to be certain that you have as many top-tier candidates available as possible to interview. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. Hiring is easy when you have that many quality candidates. So easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats and might not have the time or resources to hire. Well, thankfully, with LinkedIn, the process is intuitive, quick, and easy. And they even just launched a feature that helps you write job descriptions. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free terms and conditions apply. I'm joined now by Kyle Trimble. He's a doctor of physical therapy. He runs bangedupbills.com. You can follow him on Twitter at bangedupbills. He joins us each week to talk about injuries ahead of the upcoming bills game. And that's what we're going to do right now. And I want to start with Daquan Jones, a player that is returning, going to play on Sunday. A big deal here, a big boost to the Bills' defensive line, but I know it was a pectoral injury. He beat the timeline a little bit, and so would he be curious to hear your thoughts on on that and just if there's any limitations, is he going to come back and be the guy we saw in the first four weeks of the season? What can you tell us about Daquan Jones? Like you said, he beat the timeline that I thought he would uh, try to reach coming back in Week 18, the wild card weekend. He came back in just the three months, which is not a surprise from a pectoral injury uh, recovery, but I thought he would need a little more practice time, especially since they had that time allocated to him with the 21-day practice window. So it's fortunate to see that they want to get him back in there and play against the New England Patriots, who is a lesser opponent than the Miami Dolphins next week. I think it's good to get some live reps out there because that's the only way you can really see how he responds against true 100% live reps versus mm-hmm. uh, lesser reps in practice. So when he does come back, I expect them to significantly limit his snaps, maybe get him in on certain either pass uh, plays or run plays where they know they can control the narrative a little bit, make sure that he's not going to overextend his arm. He will be wearing a harness on that right side. And then I expect him to struggle a little bit blocking onto the right. I expect him maybe not wrap up his guys as uh, smoothly. So he might, you might see some broken tackles. But if he can just be a space eater, get in there, apply pressure, and use his legs more, we still might see a, an effective Daquan Jones. We're not going to see what he was, you know, week five and before. But if he can be Jordan Love or Jordan Phillips level replacement, a uh, replacement level guy, I can work with that, and then he can still continue to improve as week eighteen and hopefully the playoffs progress. Yeah, it's nice to see him get a ramp up game here with the Patriots before you know, kind of the bigger moments. Certainly a huge game for the Bills on Sunday. Don't get me wrong, but. Miami playoffs, that's going to count a, count for a lot. Um, I want to talk about a player that does not have a designation, but I have a level of concern. It's Terrell Bernard. We saw him go down uh, in the Chargers game, non-contact injury, winds up coming back and finishing the game, uh, but practiced in a limited capacity Wednesday, Thursday, a full practice on Friday. 
what's going on here? Can you can you look at that tape and te- give us some ideas as to what maybe is going on? So he stepped real funny in the second uh, quarter. He was just kind of trying to turn up field and his leg kind of just pivoted awkwardly. He was trying to go upfield and his foot was still kind of facing toward the out of bounds. It wasn't a high ankle sprain, though sometimes when you see that dorsiflexion where they're planting through the foot and that foot turning outward, the E-version, you do see that where there's a high ankle sprain mechanism. And usually when I think that there might be a medial ankle sprain, it actually is a high ankle sprain, so that's what kind of where I defer to. But the way he was able to return as quick as he did and the way he was pro- uh, progressed through this week suggests more of a medial ankle sprain, which is the deltoid ligament uh, on the inside portion of the ankle. We saw that be the same injury that Kyrie Elam dealt with and sent him to IR for a while this season. I don't know that Bernard's is as severe, but if they tape the heck out of it, and just make sure that they you know, maybe limit his snaps if they need to. Um, I still think he's going to go out there and play his full complement of snaps, but if they can pull him early, let's do that. He might limit, be limited a little bit side to side, um, maybe some start-stop stuff, but I think once the adrenaline starts going, he should be good to go. And He's been playing through some other injuries. He has a long history of playing through injuries in college. It's just another injury he's going to play through, and I think he's still going to be quite effective despite the right ankle injury last week. Tamar Hamlin, uh, let's talk about him. Limited all week with a shoulder injury. I'm guessing with Micah Hyde being ready to go on Sunday, he was probably going to be inactive anyways, but yeah, it's not encouraging, right, that he couldn't practice in full at all this week and has a shoulder injury. Anything long-term we're concerned about here? Uh, unfortunately, I am. So what happened was he was trying to block on a special teams play where we were uh, punting, and he got blasted by um, the – the defensive player and the way his arm was the right arm, he was a B ducted, which was out to the side a little bit. And he was trying to block. So when this guy hit his shoulder, there was a shearing motion in the humeral head and it kind of pushed the shoulder backwards. There's a strong concern for a labral tear, which is unfortunately a way to tear that a direct blow to the shoulder among other ways. Uh, we saw this happen with Teron Johnson in the past, Jordan Phillips, uh, numerous other guys over the years. It's, it's a fortunately a common injury in football, but he was able to return with a shoulder harness just to kind of give it some support there. Um, will he need surgery later on? Very possible. Uh, I don't expect him to play this week just because Micah Hyde is looking to return. And let's face it, let's let DeMar Hamlin rest. If you need him later on, at least give that shoulder a rest and use that more as an active instead of having to play through the injury and him struggling. Let's talk about AJ Epinesa and Micah Hyde. Uh, Epinesa listed as questionable for this game. Micah Hyde does not have a designation. Uh, Sean McDermott indicated on Friday morning that Micah Hyde was expected to go and that AJ Epinesa was improving, but you know he does have a designation of questionable. These two injuries happen in the same game. They've both missed the last two. Um, just real quick on what you feel about the status of both of those players. I think Hyde's had enough time to rest. I'm sure if he were to go take another hit, he could injure things again, but he took the two weeks off, and I think it's just trying to survive in advance, get through the end of the season. Hopefully that ends with confetti in the Super Bowl for Hyde. So it's just a matter of just trying to make sure he limits the hits and saves them for when he's out there on the field and during the games. That's for Epinesa. He talked last week about how the rib was still popping out a little bit due to the rib cartilage injury that we suspect he has. And they just want to make sure that he's not going to be setbacks and warm ups, I'm sure. So, in case he's doing stretching and rotating, blocking, that they can still sit him and play, let's say, Kingsley Jonathan if he has an aggravation or something. But the injury is still present in there, but it might be healed up enough to where he can maybe limit his snaps, like we do see on the defensive line, and he can get out there and still be effective uh, come Sunday. Uh, listen, Epinesa, give me him against the Dolphins. <laughs> That's what I'd like to see. So, if he needs to sit one more week, that'd be. That'd be all right. And then you can give all the Von Miller snaps to AJ Epinesa next week against Tua. Uh, real quick on the Patriots. Patriots injuries are always fascinating because of, um, well, they're the Patriots, and they just do things a little bit different. Juju Smith-Schuster, wide receiver, has already been ruled out for this game. But there's some other players of consequence that we need to be monitoring here as we're you know getting close to the inactives uh, early on Sunday morning. Who on the Patriots side of things are you paying attention to? There's just a few, uh, one of them being safety Jabril Preppers. He missed uh, last week with a hamstring injury, suffered it originally against the Kansas City Chiefs, and he was limited all week, which most guys on the Patriots injury report are limited and are questionable heading into the game. And it might just come down to how he's feeling. With how the Patriots are with their record, it would make sense not to play him, but some these guys are prideful. They want to get out there and play if they can. 
um, he's the one true questionable. I just don't really have a ton of information regarding how far along it, he is. And the other ones you want to watch out for are tight end Hunter Henry. Uh, he suffered a left knee MCL sprain against the Chiefs as well. He missed last week, and he had been performing quite well up to that point yeah. and had been pretty durable. So I don't anticipate him playing, but once again, he's a warrior. He's going to want to get back out there. But even if both of them do get out there, I could see early exits if they aggravate their injuries or they're not going to be as effective just because they're so limited by those lower body injuries. All right, there you have it. Bills, Patriots, New Year's Eve, a big Happy New Year to you, Dr. Kyle Trimble. We've got at least one more of these conversations and hopefully several more of these conversations. Thanks, as always, for joining us and sharing your expertise. Thank you, and Happy New Year. As the weather gets colder, the NFL offers stay hot on FanDuel because right now new customers can get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's right, $150 bucks if your team wins. So if you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is super easy to use, and there's a ton of different things you can bet on, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and enjoy this NFL season. Again, that's FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Folks, I am obsessed with DoorDash. The convenience is simply unmatched. We're all busy people, right? I got a lot going on. And it's hard to maybe get to the grocery store. It's hard to make dinner every night. Well, DoorDash can handle those things for you. They'll bring you groceries right off the shelf, right to your front door. They'll bring you food from your favorite local restaurants right to your front door. You need something from CVS, a little gas station run? They'll take care of it for you, bringing it right to your front door. They give you time. It's unbelievable. What a great service. So check it out. You have 50% off up to a $10 value when you spend $15 or more. And your first order when you download the DoorDash app and enter code LOCK23. Subject to change, terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem our code here, LOCKED23. That'll get you 50% off up to a $10 value when you spend $15 or more on your first order with DoorDash. Subject to change, terms apply. All right, folks, it's prediction time here on the podcast. But before I get there, I would love to invite you to join the Locked On Bills subtext community. We are having fun. What is it? Well, it's one-on-one text messages with me. I send out my first reaction to all major Bills news. So when the Bills activated Kyer Elam this week, when they cut Jermaine Effetti and, of course, uh, elevated Daquan Jones, my first reaction went right, went right out to our subtext subscribers. You can send me a text message when you want to. We'll talk Bills football. You also give my live in-game analysis. So as I'm watching Bills Patriots, pretty much after every drive, I'll be sending out text updates to all of our subscribers. So check that out. If you're interested, there's a link in today's show notes to join, and you can you can be part of that. We also added the Discord channel where we've got hundreds of Bills fans in there talking Bills and Sabres and life and fitness, nutrition, all kinds of cool stuff. I also share my all 22 film clips in the Discord channel. So it's uh, you know minute, two-minute clips of me talking over the plays from the game. Uh, that's a great supplement to what we do here on the podcast. So again, link in today's show notes to join. Also, if you are an international listener and i know that uh, subtext is not available to you guys well i can get you in our discord channel for the same rate as our subtext so shoot me an email joe marino 65 at gmail.com and i'll send you the link to be part of our discord channel as well so i got something for our international fans although you can't be part of the subtext because they don't have it set up for you to be part of it all right folks check that out but also it's time for those predictions i have five of them for you And um, I'm only going to do one player prop this week from FanDuel. Uh, But here's what I have. Number one, I have the Bills to go over 100 rushing yards. And that's a pretty big deal because the Patriots don't really allow teams to get many rushing yards. They're number one in yards per carry in the lowest amounts of yards per carry this year. Uh, They're number two in rushing yards allowed. They're great at stopping the run. They've held six consecutive opponents under 85 yards rushing and also nine of the last 10 under 85 yards rushing. I have the Bills going for 100 or more against the New England Patriots, whether that's some explosive runs, whether that's Josh Allen, whether that's having a lead and bleeding clock and getting a bunch of rushing yards late in the game. Some type of way, I think they get 100 rushing yards in this game. Number two, and I wanted to have some type of a Josh Allen number because I've really been wanting for him to have a big-time breakout game. And I think the safe 
but somewhat aggressive way to predict that is for me to predict 20 or more completions for Josh Allen in this game. And that's a number that Josh Allen has hit plenty of times in his career, but not recently. Last week, he was 15 completions and 21 attempts. Week before that, he was seven completions and 15 attempts. So we're talking 22 pass completions over the last two weeks. And I'm going to predict that he has 20 or more in this game against the Patriots. I think they're going to want to find some rhythm in the passing game. I think that's absolutely critical for the Bills as they gear up for a postseason run. They got to find some rhythm in this passing game. The Patriots are going to blitz. I think it's going to be important for Josh Allen to get the ball out of his hands. It's going to be important for them to use some quick game. And so I I think you're going to see. 20 or more completions, and hopefully within that, it's a lot of rhythm from Josh Allen, and we're seeing this passing game get to a level that um, is going to be able to help them in the playoffs in some of these big moments that are coming. So 20 or more completions for Josh Allen. Number three, I want to get in on a little Dalton Kincaid action. If you go to FanDuel, they have his over-under for receiving yards in this game at 25 and a half. I'm smashing the over. And a couple thoughts here. First of all, Dalton Kincaid's been really quiet over the last three weeks. His receiving yards the last three weeks, he had seven yards last week, zero the week before that, and 21 the week before that. So he's been pretty quiet here over the last three games. Uh, So I'm predicting him to go over 25 and a half receiving yards when he has a total of 28 receiving yards in the last three games combined. But the Patriots were, the week seven game was kind of the start of his mini breakout at 75, uh, or excuse me, I think he had 83 receiving yards, if I'm not mistaken, against the Patriots the first time around, it was a career high at the time for him. And um, I think he's going to be a big part of the Bills being able to deal with some of the pressure looks that the Patriots are going to give to him is kind of finding Kincaid on some of the shorter routes, but also they really should be able to use him uh, down the middle of the field as well, where I don't, I just don't love the Patriots coverage options at linebacker. And so I'm looking for the Bills to kind of attack and exploit some of that. And um, I think you see Kincaid top 26 yards receiving, which is all I need him to hit for the over to hit on that prop. Number four, this is a a little bit of a different one. I am predicting that Bailey Zappi's total for sacks, fumbles, and interceptions is five or more. And so when you add up after this game, how many times he was sacked, how many times he fumbled, and how many times he threw a pick, that number will equal five or more. And so maybe it's four sacks and a pick. Maybe it's Two picks, two sacks, and a fumble, right? There's a bunch of different ways to get there, but I think that total will be five or more. Um, Again, I thought about going in on a sack number or multiple picks or something like that, but I think the point that I'm trying to make is that the Bills are going to force him into some negative plays, and those being sacks, fumbles, interceptions, and for a, a higher number than five, five or more. And then lastly, I do think the Bills win this game. They're they're 14 point favorites at home. That's might be a little bit much, but I, I feel like this is a take care of business moment. The Bills, I mean, how disappointing would that be to lose to the Patriots twice in one season, especially uh one of those losses coming late in the season where the Patriots are four and eleven and eliminated from the playoffs, and you have a real shot not only to uh clinch and go to the postseason, but play for the division next week. I feel like they take care of business, and I'm hoping to see a game here that gives me some real hope for the passing game. I want to see Josh Allen in rhythm, dicing up this Patriots defense. I want to see that badly. And I want to see this defense really come together and perform way better than they did in week seven. And, and Daquan Jones, I want to see him playing well. Micah Hyde back on the field. You know, get some get some chemistry going here and get ready for a tough, tough, tough Dolphins offense to deal with next week. Um, and so I'm looking for, I don't, I don't want to call it a get right game, but in some components, I am looking for the Bills to get right. Um, And hopefully that comes in the form of sacks and takeaways on defense and Josh Allen dicing them up on offense. That's what I need to see. But at the bottom line, I think the Bills win this game. So there you have it. My five predictions. Bills over 100 rushing yards, 20 or more completions for Josh Allen. Dalton Kincaid over 25 and a half receiving yards. Bailey Zappi's total sacks, fumbles, and interceptions equal five or more. And the Bills win. All right, folks. We've done all we can here on this podcast. The only thing that's left to do is for the Bills to go out and play on Sunday afternoon and beat the New England Patriots. The hay is in the barn, and we have plenty of post-game coverage coming for you. Of course, I'll go live on Bleacher Report immediately after Bills uh, and Patriots conclude on Sunday afternoon. And then, of course, all the post-game coverage here 
on Locked On Bills. I'm looking forward to getting back into the All-22 review next week and getting ready for the Miami Dolphins. So plenty of big-time discussions coming your way here on the podcast. Don't miss anything. Would love it if you took a second to rate, review, share, and subscribe to the podcast. Enjoy your weekend. Go Bills. And I look forward to catching up with you again after the game.